Good morning and Merry Christmas. Have you opened some of your Christmas co uh, presents yet? Or maybe all of them? <laughs> Do any of them have it related to or something close to what you might want to do when you grow up? Uh, anyone who want to be an artist? Did you receive any art supplies? Anyone want to be a, a builder? Did you receive any, any construction toys? The Tonka trucks or Lego blocks? And what, what is it that you want to be when you grow up? Any, any presents related to that? Someday God will lead you to do the work that he wants you to do. We all have a calling. Today we are celebrating Jesus' birth. Jesus came as a little baby, born in Bethlehem. We have the manger scene lit up this morning. We've been waiting for him to arrive, haven't we? Even when he was a baby, Mary and Joseph knew what Jesus would do when he grew up. An angel told Joseph that Jesus would save his people from their sins. An angel told Mary that Jesus would be a king and that his kingdom would have no end. When Jesus grew up, he told the disciples what he came to do. He came not to serve, but to, to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Even one of his Christmas gifts points that out. The wise men brought myrrh a spice used in burial. When you grow up, God will lead you to serve him in whatever work you do. Today, as we celebrate Jesus' birthday, we remember that he had a very special work to do when he grew up. Jesus came to die on the cross for our sins. It's very, very nice that here we have the cross in front of the manger scene, as we always remember. That was God's purpose. That's where God saved us. That's where Jesus died for the sins of the whole world, for your sins. He rose from the dead, and he is our king who reigns forever. And we will live forever with him in his kingdom that has no end. And that makes this day a very merry Christmas. Let's pray. Jesus, on this Christmas day, help us to remember that you came to save us. You died on the cross for us. Our sins are forgiven, and we will live with you forever. Amen. Well, and adults, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Some bumper stickers are interesting, really interesting, right? There's a few that almost make the traffic worthwhile. There was this one the other day. It said, you're special just like everyone else. This your special thing has gotten a little out of hand, don't you think? One of the most common titles in the greeting card section is to a special child on, on their birthday. And inside then there's that sappy poem describing why they're so special. Ironically, it's bought and mailed out to everyone. Maybe you concluded long ago that to be truly special was to be ordinary. But try to find a greeting card that says to an ordinary child on their birthday. <laughs> Not going to be out there, is it? If you could, that would be a truly special card. The Bible is full of stories about special children, special because of their amazing birth stories. There's Isaac's story, special because he was born to Abraham and Sarah so late in their old age. They knew they, they were too old to have children, a child. There's Moses, especially because Pharaoh had decreed that all the Hebrew boys born in Egypt were to be killed. But he survived and was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter, that he might eventually lead Israel out of slavery. There's Samuel, who is special because he is the son of Elkanah and Hannah. Hannah was barren until God answered her prayers. And there's Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist, who's special because his parents were the elderly priest Zachariah and his wife Elizabeth, in whose home Mary found shelter. But beyond their amazing births, all these Bible characters are special because of their roles in the story of redemption. 
Isaac is the promised child of God's covenant with Abraham. From Isaac's line would come the Christ. Samuel is special because he was the priest and prophet who anointed David king over Israel. And it was into David's family that Jesus was born. And John the Baptist was special because he was the forerunner of Christ who prepared the way through his preaching of repentance, proclaiming Jesus to be the Lamb of God. And then there's this wonderful child whose birth is prophesied by Isaiah. And what makes Jesus so special that the whole world celebrates his birthday even 2,000 years later? The baby born to Mary is special because everything about him is wonderful. And I'm using that word wonderful literally, meaning full of wonders. Wonders like what? Well, first, the birth of this child is wonderful. All other children mentioned in the Bible had amazing birth stories, but none as wonderful as the birth story of Jesus. His birth was to a virgin, Mary. Who ever heard of such a thing? It had never happened before in the history of the world, nor has it happened since, at least not without human interference. In recent years, science has made amazing advances in reproductive technology. Decades ago, in, in vitro fertilization was developed, allowing childless couples to have children. It's a true wonder, but it's not a virgin birth. Then there was cloning. Remember Dolly the sheep back in 1997? That's also a wonder of science, but still not a virgin birth. The birth of Jesus far outshines any wonders of modern science. There are no scientists in lab coats involved in his conception. There was no human father either. This was just the Virgin Mary and the power of the Holy Spirit that came over her. The eternal Son of God took to himself a human nature in the womb of a virgin. He went through the normal nine-month gestation period and was born to the adoration of shepherds and angels. Now that's truly a mighty wonder. It's so wonderful that the doctrine of the virgin birth of Christ is enshrined in all three ecumenical creeds of the church. In order to be a Christian, one must confess the doctrine to be true. At our baptism, at our confirmation, we tell the world, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. So many Christian churches are struggling with this. They can't accept the supernatural wonder of God in the virgin birth. But it is true, and it is wonderful. Second, the nature of this child is wonderful. You and I have a wonderful human nature. It's far more wonderful than, than the nature of an animal. I've read articles and seen film clips of, of chimpanzees behaving like human beings. You can teach a chimpanzee to operate a spaceship and type out sentences using picture words on a special typewriter. Chimpanzees can reflect on themselves in a mirror, grooming their hair. They can do all sorts of things. It's, it's quite wonderful, but a chimpanzee is not a human being. Human beings have a soul. Human beings have a moral and spiritual nature. Human beings have a will that chooses to do good or evil. Human beings are made in God's image with the intent that we should live holy lives in eternal fellowship with Him. That divine image is damaged and broken by sin, but it's still there, and we are still accountable to God for all our words, thoughts, and actions. No other form of life but human life is. That's a wonder. But even more wonderful is that the Son of God, born to the Virgin Mary, shares our human nature in every way except for sin. Our will, our mortality, our emotions, our trials and struggles, our joys, our life and death, all of this is shared by Jesus. Physically and in every other way, Jesus is our human brother, with the one exception of sin. And that's one exception 
is truly a wonder. Miraculously, God kept Jesus from contracting sin, the disease that infects us all. He was born as pure and holy as Adam before the fall. Mary was not without sin. Hebrews tells us that sin is inherited from Adam down through the fathers. And that is why we say that Jesus was born without sin, even though his mother was not. It's part of the mystery, and it's wonderful. But the other part of the mystery that makes Jesus a truly wonderful child is that he also has divine nature. He has two natures, the nature of man and the nature of God. Even as he is completely human with a body and soul like ours, he is also fully and completely God. All the attributes of the deity were communicated to Jesus in the womb of his virgin mother. Never did he cease to be God, though he willingly laid aside the glory that was properly his. Thus St. Paul says in Philippians, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking on the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the knee of Jesus, name of Jesus, every knee should bow, and every tongue confess under heaven and under earth. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The divine Son of God becomes a human slave, dying for sinners in order to save us. Now that's wonderful. Finally, the purpose of this child is wonderful. There are all sorts of theories as to why God sent his Son. There's a bit of truth in all of them, but there's only one real purpose, and that is the truth that he came to save us. Someone has said a heresy is simply a truth exaggerated. And we, I think we can all agree with that. For example, some say the purpose of Jesus is to be a great moral and ethical teacher. He certainly was. He took the law of Moses that had been codified and applied by the rabbis and showed us how to apply it. Not literally in every conceivable situation as they did, but according to its spirit. The rabbis taught in the most minute detail what we could and could not do on the Sabbath day. They came up with so many rules, the Sabbath became a burden and not a blessing. Jesus clarified what Moses had in mind. Or maybe what God had in mind through Moses. Man wasn't made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath for man, he explained. And thus it's lawful to be good and to save a life on the Sabbath, regardless of the rules. His teaching was wonderful. But that's not why he came. Some say the real reason he came was to give us an example of sacrifice for the benefit of others. Thus, Jesus suffered and died at the hands of evil people, but he didn't retaliate. He turned the other cheek, sh showing us what we should do, that we should do the same. But as we do, people change. The thief on the cross changed as he watched the innocent Jesus suffer without cursing anyone. The centurion changed as he watched Jesus die, praying for and forgiving his accusers. Sacrificial love changes the world and makes it a better place. Jesus' sacrifice is a wonderful example that shows us we should be sacrificial also. But that's not why Jesus came either. Jesus himself tells us why he came. In the Gospel of Mark, it said, For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And in Luke's gospel, he said, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And in the gospel of John, he said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Put all of these together, and you have the purpose of Jesus coming in his own words. He comes as a ransom. That means he exchanges his life for ours, that we might be free from sin and death and the devil. 
He comes to save the lost. That means he seeks out those who have strayed from God and brings them safely home. He comes to give us an abundant life. That means he comes to give eternal, joyful life in the presence of God to all who believe in him. No one else in all of history has come to ransom us from sin, death, and the devil. No one else has ever sought us out as a shepherd and brought us back to God. No one else gives us an eternal and abundant life. No one but Jesus. <laughs> and that's truly wonderful. This child born of Mary is wonderful beyond words. A great and mighty wonder, a full and holy cure. The virgin bears the infant with virgin honor pure. Proclaim the Savior's birth to God and high be glory and peace to all the earth. We pray. Father in heaven, what a truly wonderful child your son is. May we, like shepherds and kings of old, fall on our knees in worship and then rise in thankful service to the divine Christ who became one of us in order that we might be saved. In his name we pray. Amen. <laughs>